everyone, Gary Simon here of CoreCetro.com, and today is exciting because Google recently, within the past two weeks, released what's called Cloud Firestore. So Google had Firebase, which is a real-time database, and there were some obvious shortcomings. Now, fortunately, they released this new database called Cloud Firestore. So Firestore is real-time as well, but it offers several key advantages over the Firebase real-time database, such as structure. So the Firebase real-time DB returned a large JSON tree. Uh, Firestore stores your data in objects called documents, and these are grouped into collections. So within these collections, you can have sub-collections up to 100 levels deep, and then also querying. This is the best part of Firestore. You can query for documents without having to retrieve all the other data in the other sub-collections. So this means you receive a faster response. There are also some other benefits like scaling, better, improved pricing model, and fetching data just one time is also easier. All right, so in this tutorial, we're going to focus on creating a simple Angular app using the Angular Fire 5 library to read and write from Cloud Firestore. So let's get started. Oh, but real quick, before we begin, make sure you check out my site, CourseCetro.com, where you're going to find a bunch of courses on modern design and development. A lot are free, and the others you can access for the cost of buying me like a six-pack each month. That's it. Now, also, it probably wouldn't hurt to subscribe here on YouTube, and be sure to make sure the notifications are turned on. All right, let's get back to it. So I'm going to go back to my console here. And the prerequisites, of course, as always, we need Node.js with NPM to check whether or not you have it. And then if neither of these or either of these give you um, an unrecognized command, just go to Node.js.org, download the suitable installer, install the default options, reload your console, your command line, and then you'll be able to run these and you have it and you're ready to go. We also want to make sure we have the Angular CLI or command line interface installed and this helps us start the Angular project quickly. So uh, the command for that is npm install at Angular forward slash CLI at latest, and then hyphen G for global. That means you only have to install it once on your machine, and then hit enter. I've already installed it, so I'm not going to do that. Now, let's start the actual project. So I'm going to put in ng. That's how we reference the CLI, new, and I'm going to call this project Firestory. Name yours, whatever you want. All right, I'm going to CD into that Firestore directory. And we're going to install the two required packages, which is Angular Fire 2 and Firebase. So npm install Angular Fire 2, Firebase, and save it as a dependency in our package JSON file. All right, once that's done, ng serve, which will Compile the project, serve it up in our browser. Just visit right here, localhost 4200 once it's done. And we'll have our project ready to go with live reloading and all that cool stuff like that. Okay, so now this next part, we're going to uh, focus on starting a new cloud Firestore project. Now, being that I've already done this and I don't really feel like having to edit the video, uh, edit the credentials out. I'm just going to um, focus on the written tutorial that shows screenshots and describes the process. I just did this yesterday and took all these screenshots from the actual interface yesterday. So visit the Firebase page. Um, and by the way, you can find this link. It's on YouTube in the, uh, the top line of the description. Um, and then you click on Get Started Here. That will show you this once. Obviously, make sure you're logged into your Google account. And then you just click Add Project. And then right here, you want to give it a project name. So I just named mine Firestore. It'll give you a unique ID of sorts. Hit Create Project. And then you want to click on Add Firebase to your web app button and copy the following properties and values and then save them in a text document for later use. So um, there's like a little button right around here behind here that says Add it to your, um, your web project or your web app. You click on it and then this screen shows up. Now, of course, you're probably going to have to pause me while you're going through this, but that's okay. And then there's some credentials right here in the middle of this uh, object called uh, config. You're going to copy these and then paste them in like Notepad or something like that for later use. Then you click on this database menu right here. And then 
you'll see the real-time database. This is the old one that we've uh, all been using, or some of us at least. And then over here, we have this Cloud Firestore. So try Firestore Beta. That's what you want to click on. After that, we're going to choose Test Mode. So it says Start in Locked Mode. We don't want to do that. We're going to start in Test Mode. This allows us to start right away without any type of uh, security rules that are enabled. So then click Enable after you choose Test Mode. Next, we're going to click on Add Collection, and this will show up on the, uh, it's actually a, a button right behind this module right here, or this little panel. You click Add Collection, you'll see it's very easy. This screen right here shows up. So you have a collection name uh, that's relevant to what you wanna do. We're just going to assume you know, our project is like, uh, just consists of posts of some sort. That could be blog posts or, or whatever. So we name it Post and click Next. After that, this screen shows up called Add Data. Now this simply allows you to just add some initial data if you want. Uh, so one field that we're going to include is title of type string, and you can just give it a value, my awesome title, whatever. And then also content, like this would be, you know, like a blog content or whatever. So again, string and then my amazing content, whatever, hit save. And then this is what it'll look like roughly. So you have your, co your collection here, posts, and then you have your first document right here, and this is an auto-generated ID, and we'll get into how you can create one, a uh, custom one for yourself uh, using Angular Fire. And then here's the actual data associated with this document, content and title. All right, and that's all there is from that point. And by the way, this the flow of this video tutorial would just be flow, following the flow of this written tutorial, um, just for your reference. Okay. So now what we want to do is integrate Firestore into the Angular project. So we need to get up our uh, code editor. All right, and here's mine. I have the uh, Firestore project that we installed. And I'm going to go to source app and the app module TS file. Uh, it always seems to be the very first file that uh, we start working in with any Angular project. And so... What we need to do is import a couple libraries and add them to the import section up top. All right, so those two are the ones that we used npm to install. And so here are the two lines. So we're importing Angular Fire module from Angular Fire 2 and then Angular Fire store module from Angular Fire 2 forward slash Fire store. After that, we're going to have our uh, Firebase config right here. So remember the credentials I told you to copy and, and paste somewhere? This is where you paste them right here. These are the same uh, properties that you know uh, you, you, you got from the, the Firestore um, interface. So I'm, I'm going to leave mine out for obvious reasons, but these should all be filled out based on what you pasted here. And then finally, we also just have two imports, and that goes in the import section down below. And that is it right here. So just these two lines. So you have Angular Fire Store module, or Angular Fire module rather, and then Angular Fire Store module. All right, I'm gonna save this. Oh, and before we uh, continue, one thing I wanted to do, change up from the tutorial just a bit, is uh, since we're already in this module file, we're going to import the forms module. And the reason we'll be doing that, which is right here, this line is because, one second, we're just add this to the imports as well, just beneath here, is because we're gonna have a very uh, brief form for adding to our Firestore, and we're gonna need to use form modules uh, and just, just for that to work correctly when it comes to two-way data binding, all right? Okay, so I just put in my real credentials and hid the file, we won't be working in there anymore. And next, what we want to do is head on to over to the app component TypeScript file right here. All right, so the next process is to import just uh, three different things uh, from the Angular Fire 2 Firestore library, and that is right here. So we'll see import Firestore, Firestore collection, and Firestore document. So these will allow us to interact with both collections and retrieve specific documents. And so this is the full line of code right there. You wanna make sure that's imported. And then also to 
I interact with these and map them to observables and also we want to use RxJS, the uh, map operator. So import those as well. All right. And further down, we have our class. And let's get our constructor here. And dependency injection, we will create an instance of the Angular Firestore. Call it AFS and Angular Firestore. And then also. For now, I'll just put our ng on init lifecycle hook, which anything inside of here will execute when the component loads. Okay, so let's uh, start talking about actual Firestore and how to retrieve a collection of data and really as a collection of documents. So the way we're going to do this uh, is, you know, obviously you recalled we imported Angular Firestore collection up, the up at the top here. And so that's what we're going to use. All right, so we're first going to define what's called an interface, which helps us define the structure of the data that's associated with our posts collection. And we can do this up here, interface post. And what did we have? Well, we had a title, and it's a type string, and content, which was type string as well. All right, and then next in our, just at the very top of our class, we're going to put post call or you can just put post collection or call it whatever you want and we bind this to an angular fire store collection and it's a post next we're going to put in posts and this is going to be an observable of post array so you'll see how these two work once we make the next two calls here. So this is this.posts call equals, and then we reference our instance of Angular Fire Store, which is AFS. So this.afs collection. So this is a method for collection. And then we simply pass in the name of our collections. And if you recall, we named it posts. And then we bind this.posts to this posts call dot value changes. And we're going to be changing this up and using a different method in the future. Just you'll see exactly how that works. So let's save that. And we'll head on over to our component. I hit control B by the way for the sidebar. Our, our template rather. Let's get rid of everything here. And we're just going to situate our results in an unordered list for now. So UL ng4 we're going to say let post of posts and async inside of here we'll put a list element of strong interpolation on the post title property and then next we'll just put a br here and post content and then save now, if you go back to your browser, you should see something similar to this. Now, this, of course, I added three different uh, documents. So they're mine are showing three years at this point. We'll probably just have one based on the title and the content that you chose. And that is it. Extremely simple stuff. Now, we'll know this is real time because on the right, I actually have the, uh, the Firestore interface up with my three different documents that are showing up on the left. So the way we know it's real time is if I just adjust one of these, like let's uh, say this one here, this is that, that's the one in the middle. Just take a look at that when I click on it, one second, and change it, whatever, <laughs> update, there we go. Pretty much instantaneous. All right, so next let's talk about how to add a document. So obviously if we want to list them out, we want to know how to add them as well. So while we're in this uh, template right here, let's just add a, a form, some form elements. So input type equals text. And we're going to put do two way data binding of ng model. And we'll bind it to a property called title, which doesn't yet exist, and we'll define that momentarily. And 
and then also a text area to hold our content. I'm just going to copy this, paste that in there. This is going to be content. Again, we'll create that property in the class as well. And then let's also put placeholder. All right, and then finally, we'll put an input type of submit. Value is add a post and click. So on our click event, once somebody clicks on it, we'll call an add post method. Now, normally, I you would probably want to use Angular's reactive forms for something like this, but it's a bit more of a setup. So you can check out a reactive forms tutorial through my site, coursetra.com, to learn how to use that and set all of that up. Um, you can just go ahead in the search bar and just type in reactive and it'll show up. Okay, so right now, uh, let's go ahead and go back to our app component to define those two properties that we just referenced. So the first one was a title, that'll be a type string, and then content of type string. Now let's go ahead and add the add post method. All right, so again, we reference our instance of Angular Firestore, and we also reference the collection called posts. Then we use the add method, and we pass in basically an object. So title, and this will be this.title, which is in reference up to here, and because we're using to a data binding, whatever is in the title input will be bound to this property right here. And then also content. And that is it. So now if we go back to our project momentarily, we'll see this really ugly form up here and we'll fix this momentarily. I uh, will put in, how is it going? All right, man, thanks. Click add post and there it goes. So how's it going? All right, man, thanks, there it goes. So very, very easy. Uh, so right now, because I hate how ugly this looks, I want to real quickly uh, add, just paste in some CSS. You can find this CSS at the written tutorial and I'm just going to scroll down in this tutorial because I have that as like a last step. So let me just uh, do that real quick. So if you go to the written tutorial right here, copy just this body right here, and we put this in source styles.css. Save it. And then also there's a few, a fair amount of uh, CSS for the next part and that will be in their app component CSS. So we'll save, make sure both of those are saved. And there we go. Looks uh, just a bit better. Now, when you use the add method right here to add a document, it auto generates an ID for you. Um, now, obviously there are some times or in some cases where you wanna generate your own unique ID. In that case, you just change this very slightly. So I'm going to take this Control Shift or uh, Shift Alt and down rather to replicate it. I'm going to comment out this line at the top, and we're going to change just a couple things. So we're going to add first dot doc, and we set the custom ID here. So obviously you would want some way to make sure this is a unique ID, but we're just going to hard code this in here. After that. We change this from add to set. So we'll save it now, and that's the only change we really need to make. And we'll put in here my custom ID. I hope it works. All right. Now I just had to pause because I realized the data that I was adding was not persisting in the fire store. So if I refreshed it, it was not adding. So I went ahead and recreated a, or not recreated, but created an entirely new fire store database, hoping that would work. Still wouldn't work. And then out of the blue, it started adding my post. So I'm not sure if there was an issue with Firebase itself with persisting the data. Um, either way, uh, you can see my custom ID did work with the doc um, and set uh, methods. 
And then I also switched back just to um, the add method and that worked as well. So hopefully you guys want to ran into that issue. Okay, so let's also move on and let's talk about retrieving a single document. So sometimes you need access to a specific document. So for instance, like in the case of a blog post, like if this were to be a title or something like a preview of a blog post, um, you retrieve the collection as we've done here on like a homepage. And then when a user clicks on a title, they're taken to the full actual post. Now we're not gonna need to do exactly that, but we will demonstrate the basic concept to show you how to retrieve a single document. Now, unfortunately, our current posts property that this returns does not contain the ID. If you were to console log this, the only two properties it includes are the title and content, no ID. So there's no way to really reference it in order to get it specifically. So in order to return the metadata that's associated with this, which includes the ID and a bunch of other stuff, we have to make some changes to our code. So let's go back to our component and just underneath here, our interface at the top, we're going to add a new one called interface post ID extends post. And we'll say ID of type string. Next, we're going to change our posts property from observable, observable rather to any. And then we have to make a decent amount of changes here. Uh, I'm going to comment this line out at the top. And actually this one, I did the wrong one. Let's just uh, back up here for a second. It needs to be this one here. So this.posts is what we need to adjust. So instead of using value changes, we're gonna use one called snapshot changes. And what that does, uh, it differs from the previous method of value changes in that it provides you with additional document data, otherwise known as metadata. And this includes the ID that we need. So it seems like a lot of work just to get it um, because we have to change just a few things right here. So what we do is we use our RxJS map operator and we'll say actions. We're gonna return actions.map and this will give us access to the objects or properties rather. So we'll say a constant of data equals a dot payload. So if you were to, for instance, I uh, console log that actions up there, you would see this entire um, response that we're referencing right here. So it's doc dot data as post, and then const ID, we get the ID through a dot payload dot doc dot ID. And you would see this all in the console log. So it, it seems part potentially confusing, but if you console log it, you would see this exact structure right here. And that's where it contains all the information. So then we return the ID and data as an object here. And that is it. So it seems like a lot of work just to get the damn ID. I wish they had included a way to just include the ID with uh, the value changes method, but you just have to use snapshot, ch or snapshot changes. All right, so let's save that. And we're gonna go ahead and go back to our template real quick because we have to make some adjustments here. So we're gonna add a click event on the li. So click equals get post and the post ID. Because now we have the access to the post ID. If you were to do this without changing that component uh, class right there um, before, it wouldn't work. So we also have to change the structure of this. This is data dot title and this is data dot content all right so let's save that and we're going to put just underneath this an h1 of a specific post and then we'll put an h3 of we'll put in parentheses here single post now this is a property that we'll define here async dot title Change this to a paragraph. This would be for the content. All right. So we have to reference this get post method or create it rather. So let's go ahead and do that. 
and we just take in the post ID that we passed as a parameter. We'll say this.post doc equals this.afs, our instance here, doc, and then we get post, posts rather, forward slash the post ID. And then this.post equals, by the way, we have to define that both of these properties momentarily, this.post doc dot value changes. All right, so let's define those two real quick. So you want to create from line uh, 27 to 28, just post doc, Angular Firestore document of type post, and then post of observ observable post. We already did that up here um, previously. All right. And I just realized I referenced the wrong property right here. It's actually post. All right, then save it. Now, if we go back here and we click on one of these, well, there we go. Awesome. Let's also talk about deleting a document. So let's add a delete button just to show you how that's done and it's very easy. So just uh, with our strong, we're going to add maybe a parenthesis and then an A href with a click event bound to delete post. And once again, we'll pass in the post ID. And let's see here. And this will be delete. We'll end that parenthesis there. Then in our component class, delete post, post ID, this.afs doc, again we get the posts with the post ID, and then simply use the, the delete method. Save it, and we'll click delete. There we go. Super, super, super simple. All right, so let's also talk about where clauses. So let's say, for instance, that we want to return documents in a collection that meet some sort of criteria. So to do this, let's go back here and we'll say um, this line right here on 35, this post call is AFS collection post. This simply gets everything by default, but we can extend this. And the way we do this is put a comma here after this first argument and we'll put in ref equals ref where and then we open it up in parentheses to accept uh, a operator of some, sort, source of some sort. So we'll say first title, and we'll say equals, and then we'll say some uh, some string value like Corsetro. So this means it's only going to return the collection or the yeah the actual documents that have a title property that is equal to Corsetro. So if we save this, you're gonna see nothing shows up. We can write in something other than Corsetro, add post. We'll see it is not there. However, if we look in Firebase, or Firestore rather, we'll see it is here, but it's not being returned because it does not meet that title equal Corsetro. So if we add Corsetro instead, there we go. Very simple. So there are some limitations to this. For instance, if we try changing this to not equals, that won't work. Uh, however, you can still use operators like greater than, less than, or greater to, or greater than and equal to, for instance, or less than and equal to uh, on number values, it will work as well. I'm just going to get rid of this here now, aside from where, you can also use other query options like order by, you can limit the results, you can start at and start after, end at and end before, and this all helps, of course, for pagination. Okay, so I would say if you want to learn more about those specifically, you can check out the official documentations. And that is it. So hopefully, you know, you're able to learn quite a bit here. You know, just using what you've learned already, you could probably build a pretty robust app in the sense of just working with Firestore and Angular. So make sure you check out Corsetro.com. 
and I will see you soon with new tutorials.